There are a lot of factors that led to the decline of the movement of Occupy Wall Street, but one of the key ones is the actual tactic of occupying as a central feature of the protest. The tactic of urban camping that came to define the movement emerged largely by accident. The initial protest kicked off from a call to action in Adbusters magazine. People came to NYC from all over and didn't have a plan for where to stay, so they just camped out where they were. As time went on, the weather got colder and harsher. More and more energy needed to be devoted to maintaining the campsite itself, rather than the political activities. Besides the weather, other demands strained the camp. Homeless people moved in as the space was fairly safe and unmolested by police, who generally kept their distance. Some were helpful contributors, many were a drain on resources. Not having any sort of sovereign control over the space made it difficult to maintain. There were many successful strategies employed for managing people and space in a non-hierarchical way. But suffice to say, a divide eventually emerged between the competing interests of the direct action of Occupy. Eventually, the quote-unquote leadership started meeting off-site to be more focused. There were no real leaders, but these were the more experienced activists that had an important political role. The camps were never going to be sustainable into the winter, but the political ambitions of the movement separated from the camping before the camps went away. The visible movement people would colloquially think of Occupy as vanish, but perhaps the most important lasting legacy of the movement comes from the organization that emerged out of it. Among others, this includes Occupy Student Debt, which brought those issues to the forefront. Politically mobilizing college students was a significant factor in setting the stage for Bernie Sanders. So don't let anyone tell you the movement never accomplished anything. Its impacts are still being felt. 